If you've been paying attention lately, you've probably heard of this kid named Donnie. He likes living in fantasy worlds. He expects all the rest of us to live alongside him in this fantasy world. And uh, he has some strange goals. One of them is to make sure that the United States of America is completely played out. Because it's easier to be a dictator in a third world country. Now this guy's life story reads like something out of Tales from the Crypt. And he wants all of that for everybody. Now when little Donnie was first starting out, he was painted out to be this superhero who was going to save America. But the reality is he couldn't even get past the first issue. His destiny is to be one of those superheroes that you heard about a long time ago, but nobody cares. They told us that this guy was the second coming of Ronald Reagan and that no country on earth was going to punk the United States of America. They said this guy was something like Jesus, which we all know was nothing more than a delusion. And so little Donnie gets into the White House somehow, some way. He brings along a crew of cartoon characters alongside of him. He even drags his kids along. And let's just say that they haven't quite exactly worked out. And he has an army, an army of Confederate has-beens. And since this guy's main goal in life is to obviously be an edgelord, they absolutely love it. He's a professional at telling them everything that they want to hear so they can sleep at night. And so as we move through time, what we end up with is with the nation in a position where these Confederate has-beens are now trying to give their own freedom away and enslave themselves. And their masters tell them that we're here to save you. We're here to save America and protect your values. When the reality is going to be much different. There are some people out there who were trying to ride on his coattails and then immediately got thrown in the trash. You see, little Donnie's problem is the Constitution. It's nothing more than a chain around this guy's arms and it's time to break that chain. He hasn't been able to all the way take that chain off and so he just settles for being a grifter. The remarkable thing about the Confederate has-beens is they're always about law and order except for when they feel like it. And this guy can grift not only the nation but them and they still don't care because these Confederate has-beens gotta do things the hard way. And so does their master, Donnie. They're always reminding us that they have their militias, always reminding us that they have a bunch of cannons ready. And they always let you know that they got good aim. When they're not plotting crimes and taking over the country or punishing their enemies, they're busy telling us that they're the superheroes. Yeah, I need to have this cannon hanging off my side just in case a bad guy comes in the mall and I gotta save everybody quote unquote and this is all encouraged by little Donnie who they keep trying to sell to us as some sort of giant superhero but he's only here to tear down civilization it's easy to see and I hate to say it this way but America has a long long sordid history of punishing people that they don't like their master is supposed to be some sort of tough guy, but you have to be really weak to look at this and call this tough. He wishes he was Augustus Caesar, wishes he was all these guys in history, but he doesn't even come close. He doesn't have the gravitas for it. One of his problems is he's an old man, always looking for attention, always looking to be an edgelord, always wants someone to look at him all the time. But people don't want to see your face just your friends and just your confederate fans he wants everyone to see him but many people just ignore him on a daily basis he calls in his quote unquote strike team to punish america they raise their right hands in courtrooms around america but we all know they could care less about that right hand or what they're swearing to and so we're subjected to Rudy Giuliani, who has some sort of weird chemicals running down his face. 
and that's who we're supposed to bow down to we're supposed to be left devastated by that and of course little Donnie he's always an innocent victim it doesn't matter how many times he pokes the hornet's nest he's always the victim and he's just protecting himself unfortunately for the Confederate has-beens and for little Donnie they're going to be left sad on that last day and no one's going to have any sympathy for them and it's easier for them to just live in a fantasy world the problem with that is they expect the rest of us to live in their fantasy world and we're not having it they've literally resorted to crime it's been nothing but crime for the past few years now and it's become all about being as hard of an edgelord as you possibly can like just wear everybody out with your drag and with your boring conversations that you attempt to have with people which usually involves some sort of Karen coming by and teaching you a lesson about resisting her telling you what to do now back in the good old days of America good people were rewarded or so they told us Superman used to tell us to be nice and to help out the less fortunate America used to be the location of heroes at least that's what they raised us up to believe now being nice helping others a collective sense of responsibility for our fellow countrymen that's considered weak now because you see it's much easier to just be a hater instead we get the confederate has been they love to gather together hold the entire world hostage and remind everyone that they're not pleased and they've been on this long crusade just to let everyone know everything that they don't like simultaneously we get the rise of the YouTube edgelords who have taken it upon themselves to pile on we get our we get our Tucker Carlson's we get our Ben Shapiro's who wax eloquently on what we need to be doing and how we need to think we now live in a world where there's no such thing as anything and the white supremacist can simply deny he's a white supremacist all he needs to do is just have righteous indignation and paint himself out to be a victim which then justifies him to continue his carnage now as for all this drag that we're talking about there's a sizable number of people in this country that are simply not going to be listening to none of that and in the meantime, for black people, still getting blamed, still getting looked at, still a suspect. And one of the things they can't get over is there are people like me who you can't tie down because people like me simply fly away and do what we want. And it doesn't matter if you're on the side of the law. It doesn't matter if you want to help society. You're still a criminal anyway, even if you're Steve Urkel. And so they keep coming with the same tired meme of the urban communities and the people living there being the blight on society when they're the ones spreading coronavirus and so we continue to get blamed for everything in society in the meantime they're the ones spreading around coronavirus trying to tell us we are disproportionately affected every time something starts happening to white people in america they always make sure they come with a story for, of some drag for the black people and that's just their way of telling us that we're not going to be chilling while they're busy suffering whether that's really happening or not and so to get themselves pumped up they give themselves ridiculous little slogans like make america great again they feel better about their lives they come up with ridiculous slogans like the forgotten people make america great again it's nothing more than a dog whistle for nostalgia the problem with all that is people aren't going to bow down to you anymore well, the sellouts will, but regular people are simply not going to bow down to you anymore. And they don't know what to do about that. As for the sellouts, they'll never go away. And the only reason why they exist is to get paid to lecture the Negroes. It's why we have Candace Owens. She's there as white therapy so that they know not all the Negroes are bad and we can control some of them. And then they'll just use people like her to try and control us except that she usually gets smacked down wherever she goes the same people behind all this madness are in their labs coming up with two or three versions of coronavirus to spread around the world then they blame it on the Chinese people and the end result 
is that the entire world is now being held hostage by Confederate has-beens. America itself is completely played out. On one side of the spectrum, we got the SJWs. If uh, DC decided to bring back Superman's girlfriend, Mighty Maid, she would be immediately considered anti-woman and the feminists would have to destroy her. And then on the other side of the spectrum are the angry nerds who are always the hardest people that you've ever seen on YouTube in your entire life. They're always ready to give you a lecture too. And they always make sure they mix it in with some video games. Unfortunately for the United States of America, the world has seen through the facade. We have no credibility now. This is all by design. They made sure to tell you that you were winning when they were making sure that you had no credibility anymore. Making sure this place was nothing more than a third world country. Don't believe me? Go to Los Angeles. Go to Venice Beach and you'll see what I'm talking about. The people who claim to be patriots, the people who claim to be the real Americans, now the people who claim to be the real Americans are ready to sign their own freedom away. To the weakest person imaginable. And the old heroes, their old heroes like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson are nothing more than a joke now. Because he has ascended above all of them. The only person that should be on Mount Rushmore is little Donnie. There is no more America parachuting down as the hero ready to save the day. Because they know that we're nothing more than a bunch of rank hypocrites. But those are the good old days of America. Those days are officially over. And it is remarkable how fast he ran this entire thing into the ground. As for the good people, as for those that stand up for what's right, they're now being attacked by the real Americans. And don't try to get in their girlfriend's face or try to say anything to them because Karen will make sure she punishes you at Target. Kmart, Walmart, wherever you want to go. They always told us as kids that evil never prospers and that the good always prevails. And we have reached a tipping point where little Donnie stands on the tired, broken body of the United States of America. Columbia has fainted in his arms. The lady Columbia doesn't even know where she's at anymore. And it's very unfortunate for little Donnie because it's looking like they're gonna have to drag him out of the White House, considering that he'll be a private citizen who is trespassing on the people's property. I'll make sure I raise a toast to that. Until next time.